surprised, terrified, and powerless. That is what you feel when encountering a bloodbender. But where did this horrifying act of puppetry come from? Let's go all the way back to before bloodbending was even discovered. Roughly 35 years into the Hundred Year War, the Fire Nation arrived at the Southern Water Tribe. They led raid after raid on the small tribe, imprisoning any and all waterbenders. The final prisoner of war was a woman named Hama. I was led away in chains, the last waterbender of the Southern Water Tribe. The guards were always careful to keep any water away from us. They piped in dry air and had us suspended away from the ground. Before giving us any water, they would bind our hands and feet so we couldn't bend. Any sign of trouble was met with cruel retribution. And yet each month I felt the full moon enriching me with its energy. There had to be something I could do to escape. Hama. Desperate for freedom, realized that the guards had not eliminated all water sources from their prison, because where there's life, there's water. The rats that scurried across the floor of my cage were nothing more than skins filled with liquid, and I passed years developing the skill that would lead to my escape. Blood bending, controlling the water in another body, enforcing your own will over theirs. Once I had mastered the rats, I was ready for the men. <laughs> and during the next full moon, I walked free for the first time in decades. My cell unlocked by the very guards assigned to keep me in. So, this is only speculation, but it's believed that her escape and the reports of this legendary new power is what drew more raids to the Southern Water Tribe, roughly 60 years after they began. Tell me, who is it? Who's the waterbender? There are no waterbenders here. The Fire Nation took them all away a long time ago. You're lying. My source says there's one waterbender left in the Southern Water Tribe. What they were really looking for was a bloodbender. And unfortunately, a mother of two, Kaya, sacrificed herself to save her lone waterbending daughter. It's me. Take me as your prisoner. I'm afraid I'm not taking prisoners today. But it was a futile effort. On the other side of a vast ocean, Hama was hiding under the Fire Nation's nose. Hello, children. Ah! Hama spent the next several years moonlighting as an innkeeper just outside of the Fire Nation village. And every month during a full moon, she would secretly take her revenge out on any Fire Nation citizen unlucky enough to cross her sights. Thanks for letting us stay here tonight. You have a lovely inn. Aren't you sweet? You know, you should be careful. People have been disappearing in those woods you were camping in. What do you mean disappearing? When the moon turns full, people walk in, and they don't come out. Who wants more tea? Ordinary people couldn't fathom that it was just a waterbender wielding such power. I'm not that old. Not ready to get snapped up by some moon monster yet, at least. We wanted to ask you about that. Did you get a good look at the spirit that took you? Didn't see no spirit. Just felt something come over me, like I was possessed forced me to start walking toward the mountain. I tried to fight it, but I couldn't control my own limbs. It just about had me into a cave up there, and I looked up at the moon for what I thought would be my last glimpse of light. But then the sun started to rise, and I got control of myself again. I just hightailed it away from that mountain as quick as I could. The people who Hama did bloodbend were actually held captive, just like she once was. But Hama's legacy came to an end in the final summer of the Hundred Year War. Avatar Aang and his allies were befriended by the elderly predator. She even went so far as to begin tutoring Katara, the only other living waterbender from the Southern Water Tribe. When you're a waterbender in a strange land, you do what you must to survive. Tonight, I'll teach you the ultimate technique of waterbending, it can only be done during the full moon, when your bending is at its peak. Hama shared one of her secrets for the very first time with Katara. Meanwhile, 
Toph help discover Hama's other secret. Why would a spirit want to take people to a mountain? Oh no! I did hear people screaming under the mountain. The missing villagers must still be there. We're saved. I didn't know that spirits made prisons like this. Who brought you here? It was no spirit. It was a witch. A witch? What do you mean? She seems like a normal old woman, but she controls people like some dark puppet master. Hama! Simultaneously, Katara was hesitant to learn bloodbending. I, I don't know if I want that kind of power. The choice is not yours. The power exists, and it's your duty to use the gifts you've been given to win this war. Katara resisted until Hama crossed the line, bloodbending Aang and Sokka. Don't hurt your friends, Katara, and don't let them hurt each other. Hama was taken away prisoner once again, but this time, some of you would argue it was pretty justified. Congratulations, Katara. You're a bloodbender. So one month later, the full moon rose again, and so did a bloodbender, thirsty for revenge. What's uh, 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 happening to me? Katara was on the hunt for the man who slayed her mother. You look her in the eye and you tell me you don't remember what you did. It's not him. Katara eventually found her mother's killer and spared him. That was the last time she ever bloodbent, as far as we know. Decades later, the newly established United Republic of Nations outlawed bloodbending altogether. But the dark art would continue to haunt society via one game-changing criminal. Yakone has maintained his grip on the underworld by using an ability that has been illegal for decades. Bloodbending. The defense argued this was impossible, not only because bloodbending was such a rare skill, but because it had been reportedly performed without a full moon. The defense would have won had the court not been full of people who had witnessed the impossible time and time again. In my years, I have encountered people born with rare and unique bending abilities. I once bested a man with my trusty boomerang who was able to firebend with his mind. We find Yakon guilty of all charges and sentence him to life in prison. <laughs> Yakon revealed his power to the public, bending his way to a temporary freedom. And he would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for Avatar Aang and the Avatar Sting. I'm taking away your bending for good. <sighs> Yakone's own blood bending may have been over. His lineage of crime and power, not quite. Yakone eventually escaped prison with the help of his former gang. They changed his appearance. He found a wife and even had two sons, Tarlock and Noatok. Their family continued down a wholesome path until his boys discovered they were waterbenders too. At first we were excited by our new abilities, but our training brought out a different side of my father. Tarlock! You better shape up or you'll be out here in the cold all night until you get it right. I'm trying, but... Try harder! You two will become bloodbenders of the highest order. When the time is right, you will claim Republic City and you will destroy the Avatar. You must avenge me. That is your purpose in life. The good days were behind us. Every full moon, he took his sons on a hunting trip where he secretly trained the young boys in bloodbending. Stop! You're hurting it! Toughen up, Tarlock. You'll need a thicker skin for this. 
few years later, their education evolved into bloodbending without a full moon. Tarlock didn't have the stomach to manipulate helpless animals, but Noah Talk reveled in his new power. He was a prodigy, mastering my father's psychic bloodbending technique by the time he was 14. Yakon reached a new low when he made his children bloodbend each other. Bloodbend your brother, Tarlock. That felt awful. I don't want to do that to anyone. I never want to bloodbend again. You're a disgrace. A weakling. I'll teach you a lesson, you insubordinate. Stay away from him. This is when Yakon's delicate hold over his children snapped. The puppets had become the puppeteers. I made you what you are. You're mine. We're your sons, not your tools of revenge. Let's go. We can run away from him forever. Run away? But what about Mom? We can't just leave her. He was right about you. You are a weakling. <laughs> <laughs> My father and I searched for days, but we never found a sign of Noah Tuck. We thought he perished in that storm. My father stopped training me. With Noah Tuck gone, his hopes for revenge withered, and he passed away a few years later. Our final bloodbending chapter opens up several years later. Noah Tuck had actually lived and re-emerged in society with a new identity, Amon, a non-bending radical. Since the beginning of time, the spirits have acted as guardians of our world, and they have spoken to me. They say the Avatar has failed humanity. That is why the spirits have chosen me to usher in a new era of balance. They have granted me a power that will make equality a reality. The power to take a person's bending away, permanently. That's impossible. Of course, we know that this was done through blood bending. What did you do to me? Your fire bending is gone, forever. But it was enough of an illusion to stir massive civil unrest in Republic City. The era of bending is over. A new era of equality has begun! Amon amassed a giant army of people who believed the benders were the enemy of equality. Amon even used a fake firebending scar that actually made him seem like a victim when he was really just another predator. Before long, Amon became the target of a ruthless politician, Tarlock. Sound familiar? Amon is not going to stop. We should point out how Tarlock had no clue Amon was actually his brother. But both men had their father's desperation and power. Both men concealed their past to the public. And both men were willing to do whatever it took to reach their goal. You need to be stopped. You're just as bad as Amon. Avatar Korra, who found herself at odds with both brothers in the fight for justice, was the first to learn Tarlock's powers. And she learned the hard way. How are you doing this? There are a lot of things you don't know about me. Uh, uh. Tarlock saw no choice but to cage Korra, just like Hama was long ago. Tarlock was desperate to maintain his politically driven power. The one witness saw through his lies. I already explained. Equalists attacked us and took her. But there were no chi blockers here last night. You planted the evidence, didn't you? That is a ridiculous accusation. It's true. He took her. Why did you wait until now to fess up? I was terrified to tell because... Because Tarlock is a bloodbender. He bloodbent Avatar Korra. <gasps> Don't make this worse for yourself. Tell us where you have Korra. Tarlock blood bent his way to a temporary freedom. And who says history doesn't repeat itself? 
Though, without the Avatar State coming after him, the only force strong enough to stop him was his own brother Amon, who was also in pursuit of Avatar Korra. It is time for you to be equalized. You fool. You've never faced bending like mine. <laughs> Solution. What an awkward family reunion. Regardless, Korra escaped, and the bloodbending secrets were revealed. I'm Amon's brother. But the war against Amon was not yet over. <gasps> not when Amon used his unique bending blocking skill on the Avatar herself. Korra lost the ability to bend water, earth, and fire, the three out of the four elements that had come so easy to her in the past. Airbending was still a mystery to her, until Amon's wrath threatened her close friend, Mako. <gasps> no! Impossible. I... I can airbend? I can airbend! No, you don't! Did you see what happened? Who was that? Amon's facade was washed away. Literally. He's water. Oh, no. he is a the scar is fake. The Avatar was telling the truth. Amon lost everything. And while in retreat, he felt that the only place he could turn to was family. The two of us together again. There's nothing we can't do. Yes, no attack. No attack. I had almost forgotten the sound of my own name. Even his younger brother Tarlock knew that their powers were too much for the world to bear. It will be just like the good old days. A dark conclusion to a dark subject. What do you think about bloodbending? How could it have been used for good? Comment below, like and subscribe, and keep watching for all things Avatar. It's like my brain has a mind of its own! Stop it, Arm! Stop it!